So now that we're at the end of this fluid dynamics discussion, I'd like to quickly summarize all the different kind of models that we've dealt with so far. And this is done to specifically highlight the fact that as we deal with more complex system and there's more things going on, the model and the equation that we end up using become more and more restrictive. It can only apply to specific situation because with the complexity, if you change the situation enough, the model needs to be modified accordingly. So far, all of our equations and models assumes incompressible fluids. So most liquid would end up being in this kind of fluid, no gases. Then we use Bernoulli's equation for these incompressible fluids. We also have the additional restriction of no viscous force, which is roughly the same as saying that there's no friction within the flow. So in those cases, we can use Bernoulli's and tell us lots of stuff about changing height, changing pressure, changing speed, things like that. Next, we made use of, I'm not even gonna attempt to pronounce that, but we start considering viscous forces in specific situation, right, with specific geometry. And here's what I didn't say, that all this is under the assumption that the fluid is in laminar flow. Laminar being the type of flow where all the liquid moves smoothly and you can identify layers of fluid with a certain specific speed. So remember how I drew these kind of diagrams where you have successive layers and they all move at the same speed? But as it turns out, because there's nothing holding the fluids to move all in a smooth manner, as it gets faster and faster, it's possible that some of these fluid will bump into something else and they start twisting, they start bumping, and then they start swirling all over the place. And you can sort of see that in like, say if you open the tap, if you open a little bit, it's nice and clear where you have regular organized sheets of moving fluids. And then later on, it starts becoming all cloudy and bubbly because of all this swirling that happens. And swirling tends to happen as your speed goes up and your viscosity goes down. So it's harder to make honey swirl than to make water swirl, for instance. So this last concept in the chapter has to do with this thing called the Reynolds number, which is supposed to help us define some kind of boundary of whether the flow is going to be laminar or turbulent. Because once we start moving into turbulent flow, we can no longer use this last result that we were using. As it turns out, having considered all the different variables that contribute to whether we have laminar or turbulent flow within this geometry. If you plot out your NR, it turns out that if you're below 2000, we're gonna have laminar flow. And beyond 3000, we can expect turbulent flow. And somewhere in between, we have this transition thing that depends on a lot of details, whether it's one or the other. And sometimes even oscillates between the two of them. So basically this Reynolds number helps us kind of predict whether we actually have laminar or turbulent flow. Then we can make a judgment on whether or not we can make use of these results that we've been using. I agree it's not as clean or as universal as say Newton's law of motion, but again, the necessary complexity of the system requires the model to be also more complex. So to answer the question, they are asking us about the flow rate, flow rate being Q, your volume flow rate, such that we're just maybe beginning to have turbulence. So that's why we're using this cutoff of 2000. So we know NR is 2000 and we want to find Q. Q of course, it's equal to V times A or V pi R square. So we already know the radius, we just need to know V. We can use our Reynolds number of 2000 to get our V then. For water at 20 degrees, we can look up our density as well as our viscosity. Again, watching out for the units of millipascal times second, where my radius is going to be 0.1 meter. So putting everything in, 
we find that my V it's really quite low. Water being not very viscous fluid can achieve these swirlings fairly easily. With my Q, I got my V, again radius of 0.1 meters, some really tiny cubic meters per second. But to contextualize a little bit, let's convert that into liters. Meters cube into centimeters cube, and then ultimately to liters. So about a third of a liter every second for a 20 centimeter diameter pipe. Which isn't all that fast, right? So it hopefully jives with your experience with opening your tab, say. It has to be pretty slow for you to get that clear looking stream versus the mixy swirly bubbly one.